Coming up, a cultural and culinary odyssey. Three chefs, one country. Michael Ferraro, Thomas Heinrich, and Bryant Wigger explore the beautiful island nation of Taiwan. Their journey will take them from Taipei to Kaohsiung and points between to learn about Taiwan's cuisine and culture. At the end of their adventure, they'll share what they've learned by presenting their own culinary interpretations to three Taiwanese chefs. Who will earn bragging rights? Stay with us and find out. It's time to taste Taiwan. Taiwan, or as Portuguese sailors once christened it, Ilha Formosa, the beautiful island. Located approximately 100 miles off the coast of mainland China, Taiwan's population is about 23 million. Chefs Michael Ferraro of New York's Delicatessen Restaurant, Bryant Wicker of Trattoria Neapolis in Pasadena, California, and Thomas Heinrich, executive chef at Vancouver's Hyatt Regency, have traveled to Taiwan to explore some of the country's many delicacies. Their goal is to sample the culture, find new recipes, and then learn how to prepare them. They'll then take that knowledge and create their own interpretations for three culinary experts at the National Kaohsiung University of Hospitality and Tourism. Our journey begins in the small township of Beipu, located in northern Taiwan. A center for Hakka culture, the town is filled with historic sites and tea shops that are well known for their unique Hakkanese blend of tea and nuts called Le Cha. As soon as we arrived, we headed over to Beipu and we learned the art of Hakkanese tea. It was a completely new experience for me. I really yeah. smell the, the green. The yeah. green yeah. Its preparation consists of a mix of tea and herbs that are ground together with white sesame, black sesame, sunflower seeds, and pumpkin seeds. It's crazy how it transformed. Like at the beginning, you just got that floral green tea, and now you're just like getting the peanuts, the sesame, like this crazy nut aroma. Crazy nut aroma. Come on, Thomas, let's go see. This could take a while. You guys should come back in like an hour or so. <laughs> it takes about 20 minutes of grinding all the ingredients to achieve the desired consistency before adding boiling water. Cheers, fellas. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Here's the 30 minute tea. <laughs> I love the mouthfeel of it from all the seeds, the oil, how it just kind of coats your mouth. Nice texture. Mm. I can see these flavors going so well with like a different protein or something. Mm -hmm. Almost that like you were gonna lose the green tea. In the beginning when she started doing the green tea, it was really, really strong. And then she had the nuts, and then it was all about the nuts. When yeah. you started adding the water to it, the green that tea green tea in. just came out. Today, Taiwan seamlessly blends both old and new world cultures. Nowhere is that more evident than Taiwan's capital city, Taipei. Once renowned as the world's tallest building, Taipei 101 serves as the city's iconic landmark. It's no wonder that this architectural masterpiece is home to numerous corporations, as well as high-end retailers and restaurants, including Din Tai Fung Dumpling House. Din Tai Fung's key to success lies in the attention to detail. It takes a year for trainees to acquire the basic skills and three years to consistently master them. Our chefs, however, will get 30 minutes to try and learn the process. This is the dumplings dough, and uh, just, it's just dumpling skin. And he's going to show you how to make it the best dumpling skin in the world. So we have the rolling stick. You have to keep your hand in the middle of the rolling stick. Your left hand always holding the dumpling skin. OK, make it for seven and eight times. Try to make a circle. Brian, how are you doing, man? Not bad. <laughs> it's kind of almost a circle and a little bit. At Din Tai Fung, every single dumpling is meticulously prepared to meet a specified weight and appearance. So one piece of the pork dumpling, one piece of the shallow bao is going to be 21 grams per each. Filled with a variety of ingredients, including pork, shrimp, and vegetables, each is pinch sealed with exactly 18 folds before steaming. Pinch and turn, pinch and turn. Mine is like... <laughs> <laughs> the most complex part of the dumpling is the 18 folds. 
trying to get exactly 18 folds and pinching it, it's really difficult. At the same time as turning it and putting the meat in. You know, I, I knew it was difficult, but it's a whole new respect for what these men and women do there every day. Now that each chef has had a little practice in the art of dumpling making, it's time for a little friendly competition to see who comes closest to replicating the perfect dumpling. You got your ravioli down there, Mike? Yeah, I can get in there. Now I'm going to use my method of closing it. <laughs> What's that, ravioli method? <laughs> yes. Where's my egg wash? <laughs> yeah. Oh. So, which chef exhibits the best technique? So our chef star, he says, Brian is number one. No, I disagree. I disagree. <laughs> I won't accept it. No way. <laughs> After trying their hands at making dumplings, it's time to sample the real thing. So we finally got to sit down and taste the dumplings and uh, definitely lived up to the expectations. The broth is amazing. The original is always the best. Yeah. The Taste Taiwan Culinary Challenge is several days away. However, each chef is ready to go in search of inspiration. And where better than Shadong Market? This five-star market is where you'll definitely find the locals. Poultry, meat, live eel, lobster, crab, clams. There are countless fresh products to whet your appetite. So the next morning we woke up early, headed over to the local indoor market. And uh, I've been to these type of markets uh, basically all over the world. And uh, this one definitely uh, lived up to the expectation and uh, ranked among some of the best. The people were so nice and giving you samples of different things. And I got to meet a really interesting guy who had won first place for his sugarcane smoked chicken. It was absolutely delicious. And I mentioned that I really enjoy eating chicken feet. So he had this beautiful five spice roasted chicken foot. Mmm, so delicious. Some things that I saw that I wish I had at home were just these beautiful clams. The clams were so many different shapes and sizes that you'd never seen before. Just sitting in this beautiful shallow water, just spitting out water. So you know they're super fresh. You gotta come check out this live eel. The thing's incredible, it's huge in the tank over there. The seafood is just amazing. Um, you, don't, you don't see this freshness in the US, really. It's the size of it. Yeah. <laughs> and this lobster's eating the clams. They just kind of toss the fresh clams into the lobsters. Taiwan is well known for its casual street food, but at the other end of the culinary spectrum, we find Silk's Palace, which is located next door to Taiwan's National Palace Museum. The museum serves as the National Museum of the Republic of China, preserving artifacts from around 8,000 years of history. Two of the most popular and famed works on display are a jadeite cabbage and meat-shaped stone. These two hand-sculpted masterpieces serve as the inspiration for edible variants on Silk's Palace's menu. Michael, Thomas, and Brian tour the kitchen to see how they're prepared. It's amazing to see that their kitchen is only consists of three walks, and they're so loud. And when he makes the food there, it's just so quick and so fast in these walks, and the flavors he puts together is amazing. Serving up to 2,000 guests a day, Silk's Palace is renowned for maintaining an outstanding level of cuisine. After their kitchen tour, the chefs get to try the imperial tasting menu. We got to sit down and try some of the wonderful food he does there. And let me tell you, it was absolutely delicious. The art that goes into it and the technique is something I've never seen before. The Imperial Tasting Menu was so beautiful. It is so reasonably priced. And something like that you find in the States is going to cost you three or four times what you would find there. Everything looked amazing. Uh, Brian went uh, right for the pork shoulder. Uh, so Thomas and I were like, you know what? I, I want the chicken wing. One, two, three. Boom. Thank you. It was a chicken wing that was deboned and stuffed with uh, the chicken meat, rice, and pork, wrapped up and fried. Uh, it, it was pretty amazing. Are you ready for Taiwan? If you want to taste Taiwan, land packages are now available starting at $1,260 for an eight-day tour around this beautiful island. Get $100 off if you book before February 28, 2014. Visit gototaiwan.net today to learn more about this and other packages. It's time to leave the hustle and bustle of Taipei behind and begin our journey south. Taiwan is a country that boasts some of the best scenery on the planet thanks to millions of years of tectonic activity. 
Nowhere is it more on display than Taroko National Park, one of the country's eight national parks. It's named for its natural landmark, Taroko Gorge. So I'm, I'm really happy that we got to experience Taroko Gorge. Uh, it's a national park in the mountain and it's just absolutely breathtaking. Um, just all the sounds of nature uh, just really gave you this like chill, calm feeling with just this amazing scenery around you. Uh, just a really unique experience. The dramatic exposed rock formations began 200 million years ago as sediment on the ocean floor. Over the past 100 million years, tectonic compression turned that sediment into limestone and then into marble, which is why this geologic wonder is sometimes referred to as Marble Gorge. Suspension walkways above rushing waters and hot springs provide spectacular views. It was absolutely stunning. We got to take this beautiful hike on these sheer mountain cliffs, this awesome river going down below. We got to walk across the suspension bridge that was a little wobbly, but it was still a lot of fun. So as we're walking down the path, I saw some other tourists and they had uh, sausages. And I'm like, uh, who packs a sausage when you go to a national park? Oh my God, sausage. This is perfect. Hike for four miles and then we get a sausage along the way. You know, I thought I've seen it all, but a sausage stand on a hike, what incredible. And it wasn't just a sausage stand, it was a great sausage stand. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Continuing on their journey, the three chefs make their way to the coastal village of Jingpu. For centuries, indigenous Taiwanese aborigines have lived off the land and sea. Michael, Thomas, and Brian meet Chef Chen, a local aborigine who teaches them how to forage for some of their favorite ingredients. So I did not know that Taiwan had aborigines. Um, so I didn't really know what to expect, uh, but when we pulled up and saw uh, Chef Chen, uh, he was kind of like this very cool, out there, surferish, you know, live by the land uh, chef. Smells like that uh, sausage we have today. <laughs> the local vegetation not only provides a source of food, but is also used by the aborigines to weave rope and make rice baskets. One of the more challenging ingredients to gather is fresh seaweed. Chen takes the three chefs to nearby coral tidal pools to demonstrate his foraging skills. Oh, there we go. Oh, God. <laughs> we got to forage for this beautiful seaweed. We're eating it right off the rocks. Let me tell you where I come from. You are not going to eat the seaweed off the rocks in LA. It's good. Nice and salty. Back at Chef Chen's camp, all gather around the fire to share some homemade shrimp rice wine. Uh, we, we met some of his friends and family there. They were just kind of all huddled around. We're like, uh, so let's have a drink. And uh, he served us the uh, shrimp cooking rice wine. Interesting. <laughs> now united by the common language of food, Chef Chen extends his hospitality by inviting our three chefs back to his restaurant, the Pot Lily Spring, for a tour. At Pot Lily Spring, Chef Chen writes his menu daily based on his catch. After foraging, we had a little appetite, so Chef Chen took us back to his restaurant. And from there, we got to see his kitchen. It is so amazing that it's just basic for what he needs, and that's it. Uh, why Mr. Chen was cooking for us at his restaurant, uh, we decided that we were going to take some of his ingredients out of his kitchen and uh, cook for him. I think he was really interested to see what we were about. Uh, he had some beautiful swordfish, I mean, a swordfish tartare, um, using all of his Taiwanese ingredients. He was very happy with the dish, quoted 25, 30 minutes, done deal. Thomas made a great dish also. Uh, Brian made pizza. Um, you know, here they have like the thousand year old egg. Brian made the thousand year pizza because that's how long it took, but uh, I got to give him credit. Um, you know, spur of the moment there, hey, make pizza dough and uh, I have an oven outside that's not too hot. The chef chose his favorite dish and, you know, he went with the most Western dish of them all, uh, the thousand year pizza. <laughs> yes. Yes. Although hands down, uh, I think my dish was definitely the most unique and looked the best. As mentioned earlier, Taiwan has a lot of tectonic activity, which is responsible for creating some of the country's stunning scenery. 
It also blesses residents with one of the highest concentrations of thermal hot springs in the world. A great place to soak away all that daily stress is the New Life Springs Resort in the mountains above Antong. Here the recipe for complete stress relief comes from sulfur-based subterranean boiling waters that are said to rejuvenate the skin and promote better joint health. But if you feel the need to reboot your circulation, just take a dip in the plunge pool. <laughs> in addition to the local hot springs, this region also features unusual mud springs too. These bubbling gray waters are what locals call mud volcanoes. So I can come to Taiwan and get a free facial anytime I want. Amazing. The water from these mud volcanoes is actually used in the preparation of locally produced organic tofu due to its mineral properties. The three chefs visit Loshang and a family-run farm that's been producing tofu for the past 80 years to learn the process. So here we are, we're in the Loshan Organic Farm, and here we specialize in the art of making tofu. The process begins by grinding soybeans to obtain their juice. So back in the day when there was no electricity, this is what they used to grind their, um, the soybean. The juice is then combined with 15 to 20 parts water and transferred to a large wok where it's brought to a boil. You have to boil the soy milk because it has um, the soapy elements that's inside the soybean that has to be boiled off. Constant stirring is necessary to prevent any protein sticking to the bottom of the pan, which would affect flavor. Once the tofu is brought to a boil, it's then simmered and strained. The remaining milk is then mixed with the water from a mud volcano. So um, this is the water that they got from the mud volcano. They had it um, here for three days, waiting for all the mud and particles to settle down, and that's the water that you get. Use your finger to taste it. Let's hmm. go against everything I've taught every cook. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit salty. A little salty. The mud volcano's high magnesium properties naturally create protein and water separation. So this is now the, the molding process. The final step involves molding the tofu into shape by removing any remaining water. Now that the tofu has been prepared, it's time for a sampling. It's amazing, like how simple the process is, but the end product, it's like not even comparable for what you buy in a package. No. Taiwan is a country that has so much to offer, but perhaps its greatest resource is its people. Nowhere is that more evident than the little village of Xishang. Here in the agricultural heartland is where you'll find some of the most welcoming people on the planet. Two popular staples of their diets are rice noodles and moshi. Our three chefs get a lesson in preparation. Moshi is a bland, sticky dough made from glutinous or sweet rice that's pounded with giant mallets by two people until it reaches the desired consistency. A labor-intensive endeavor, Bryant, Michael, and Thomas provide plenty of free entertainment for the locals by taking part in a traditional Moshi pounding ceremony. Hi. Want to dress us up in the costume, huh? <laughs> Barely avoiding injury, the chefs beat the dough into submission. Finally, the Moshi is rolled in crushed peanuts for added flavor, an added touch that's very popular with the local kids. Are you ready for Taiwan? If you want to taste Taiwan, land packages are now available starting at $1,260 for an eight-day tour around this beautiful island. Get $100 off if you book before February 28, 2014. Visit gototaiwan.net today to learn more about this and other packages. It's time to leave the tranquil countryside behind and make our way to the final destination on our culinary tour. The southern port city of Kaohsiung is the second most populated city and largest harbor in Taiwan. And serving as a natural breakwater is Chijin Island. A 10-minute ferry ride across the harbor connects visitors to countless seafood restaurants, where the seafood is even available for purchase right on the docks. 
Our chefs visit Seaside Seafood, one of the island's best restaurants, to check out some of the locally fished products and learn about one of its most popular menu items, fish balls. So chefs, here we have the Hawaiian lady fish. The fish is very affordable and we usually make, use it to make the fish ball because the flesh is very soft. Every part of the fish is used, including head and bones for broth. Nothing is wasted. Adding flavor to the mix, ground pork. This is how they make the undesirable fish taste good. <laughs> pork and pork fat. <laughs> Once all ingredients have been combined, they're then squeezed into shape before boiling, a task that's not as easy as it looks. So who squeezes the best fish balls? Thomas. Yeah, finally. <laughs> Woo! Thomas may have earned bragging rights for best technique, but the real cooking challenge is still to come. Any trip to Taiwan wouldn't be complete without visiting a traditional night market. A foodie's paradise, Gao Sheng's night market literally comes alive with a mind-blowing array of exotic delicacies. Look at this place. Unbelievable. Look at the this fresh is, seafood over here. Yeah, I mean, this is what I've been like really excited about. I'm gonna eat a lot. Challenge accepted? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'll meet up with you guys in a bit. It's the last evening before our culinary challenge, and the night market provides plenty of inspiration. You'd never find this on the street anywhere else but here. I don't even know what it is. All right, so here you have um, the chicken butt, the tofu, chicken wing, and over here you have the gizzard, um, the quail eggs, the liver, duck intestine, chicken heart, and of course you also have the duck neck and the duck head. Well, Which guess, one would you like to try? I guess I gotta do the chicken butt. Never had chicken butt, gotta try it. Of course. Now you're gonna have three. <laughs> First time ever. Chicken butt. Seasoned with chili and pepper salt and marinated in Chinese medicine, which we can't name because we can't translate. So, here we go. Crunchy, huh? Oh, it's really good. That's really good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so you can see the smile on my face here. I'm from New York. I'm a hot dog guy. Everywhere I go, I seek out hot dogs. So this is a Taiwanese style hot dog. It is a rice and peanut sausage, which is the bun with a pork sausage inside with a soy barbecue sauce. Totally like not any other hot dog I've ever had before. This is phenomenal. Love oh, Taiwan. Love Taiwan. Love Taiwan. This is my heart for you. Oh, oh so sweet. Yes. Oh. I love you. Oh. <laughs> the national drink of Taiwan. Cheers. 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 It's the last day of the chef's culinary tour. Today, they'll prepare one dish for three notable Taiwanese culinary experts. Each dish inspired by their interpretations of ingredients and preparation methods discovered on their journey. Before arriving at the National Kaohsiung University of Hospitality and Tourism for their cooking challenge, all three chefs began their day by personally shopping for their chosen products and ingredients at a local market. Now, with the assistance of a culinary school sous chef, they begin their individual cooking challenge. Michael is working with seafood. Thomas Poultry, and Bryant Pork. On our trip, we made fish balls. Um, so I am kind of taking some of the uh, technique from that. I'm gonna puree them with some egg whites, and then I'm gonna create a sausage that we've seen every day here and I enjoy so much. I'm doing uh, chicken two different ways, and utilizing the black chicken that's local to Taiwan. I have never used black chicken before, so it'll be uh, very interesting to see uh, the difference in how it cooks. Being from Missouri, I'm all about the barbecued pork ribs. So I'm gonna take these, boil them off, make a stock with that, and the pig ears. I'm gonna boil them, cut them, and fry them like chicharrones as a garnish with my beautiful little uh, dried shrimp I found at the market. So pork and shrimp, a great combination here. All right, Brian, we have an understanding that this is timed today, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you're not doing thousand-year pig ear, right? 
I'll be able to get down in the time. <laughs> I think that uh, Thomas and I have been talking, and we feel bad because you haven't quite won a competition yet. Well, this, so, is, a this is a real competition. Oh, okay, because we really want you to win one. It's great to be back in the kitchen. It's been like a week we haven't been in the kitchen. Uh, I'm glad I'm not near the other two because they talk more than they work, so I'd rather be over here by myself. Each chef seems at home in the school's kitchen as they concentrate on the task at hand. Even though it's a friendly competition, each chef is eager to win bragging rights. The cooking challenge is nearing an end. Now that all three chefs have completed their dishes, it's time to present them to the three judges from the Department of Culinary Arts. Chef Thomas Heinrich is first to present his two-way chicken with corn puree. It's perfect. So beautiful on the plate. You have a French presentation with Taiwanese touch of taste. Bryant Wicker serves his pork balls and short ribs on shiitake rice noodles. Awesome, it's awesome. And I was so, I think we all surprised why you make all the ingredients together, serious. Last, Michael Ferraro presents his seafood sausage with his Hakka-style pesto. He says, uh, yeah, he said you are really creative. You, you create a fishbowl and the sausage because that's really traditional Taiwanese food. I like it. I like it. You use what you, you have learned here. The judges take a few minutes to confer. Okay, we're going to tell you which place we like. Okay. For me personally, I like this one with Taiwanese taste, but beautiful presentation. Awesome. Okay. He says awesome for all the dish, but if he's going to order one dish split, he's going to order this one. So I'm the final one, right? I'm so nervous. I, I wish I can order all the three because I love them all. It's so hard for me. Probably this is uh, hard for me to make a decision, but I have to pick one, right? So. I will pick this one. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Well, we did have to let him win one, so it's okay. <laughs> this is the only one that really mattered, guys. <laughs> My overall impression of the trip to Taiwan, um, it, it's overwhelming. I mean, it was just, you felt so much positivity. We were welcomed so warmly. We had a great time. Uh, what I've learned from being here in Taiwan is that the people are really friendly. The scenery is spectacular. You know, learning about the tofu and the noodles, uh, we were very lucky to have that uh, experience. But the country itself is just amazing. The people, just fantastic. The second you land, the people are so nice and so friendly, and it just carries out throughout your whole trip, whether you're here just for a couple of days or whether you're gonna stay a couple of weeks, you're gonna get such a royal treatment no matter where you go. And uh, I, I definitely plan on coming back very soon. The Taste Taiwan Culinary Challenge has introduced each chef to new flavor profiles and methods of preparation that they'll take home to their restaurants and incorporate in their menus. But more importantly, it's also provided them with a wealth of memories and friendships that will last a lifetime.